thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Kishan, and uh, along with me, we have Rohan into the call. Um, we'll be speaking about how Hedgepin has been helping companies. Uh, the telco companies evaluate their quality of experience from an end user's perspective. Um, to introduce the panel, uh, uh, I'll speak about Rohan. Rohan brings around more than 11, 12 years of experience working for uh, large enterprise level companies. Uh, he has been with uh, Headspin for more than three years now. He's a director of APACT. He heads customer engineering uh, uh, in the company. And uh, um, I'm Kishan, I'm a global partner manager at Hedgepin. Um, I've been here for more than a year now. I take care of all the channel sales activities. I come with more than seven years of experience working with large GSI and some small size, uh, mid-size uh, startups. And uh, happy to be you know, here speaking about Hedgepin and the value proposition that we bring for the telcos. Um, I just quickly set the agenda after this. Um, in the, in the today's webinar, we have structured it in a way that, you know, firstly, we'll be speaking about the company, what have we done so far, and uh, where do we stand, what is our motto. After that, we'll be speaking about how Hedgepin has been helping telco companies monitor their performance on uh, their customer experience from consumer applications perspective. And uh, later on, we'll be speaking about, you know, debugging telcos, uh, having any performance level issues compared to their uh, competitors and other carriers, uh, which includes network benchmarking and experience on different networks. And lastly, we'll be talking about what makes Headspin, you know, one of the most unique and valuable solutions out there. Um, after this, Rohan will be giving us a quick demo about, you know, how to use Headspin platform, uh, how does it look like, and later on we'll be proceeding with the Q and A. Um, that's that's what the agenda for today is. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, type your questions onto the comment section and uh, we'll, we'll try to answer all your questions. Thanks, Rohan. So Hedgepin is um, a more than seven years old company today. We were founded in 2015 uh, with seed funding capital from Google, uh, Google Ventures. And uh, ever since we have been growing so far, in the last few years, we have seen um, um, a lot of growth in customers and they're getting serious about customer experience because we do understand that uh, all these companies are becoming digital and uh, Headspin's motto is to help these companies uh, make their digital experiences better because having a poor experience uh, will cost a lot to the businesses. We understand that. And we our motto is we exist because of this problem. We help companies solve their digital experiences. and. Uh, um, we have been working with uh, many large customers in uh, US, uh, Europe, India, um, and uh, Australian market. We have been you know, working with a lot of customers there. So from the board perspective, we have Mr. Nikesh Arora, who is the, you know, the, heading the board. He's also uh, the CEO of Palo Alto Networks. Uh, then we have Mr. Raji Bhutani, who is CEO. He was a uh, former CTO. MD um, Accenture. We have Brian Pera, who is the CTO. He has also worked on the product for more than seven years with Headspin. Uh, Mr. Iravi Gopan is the CRO, and Mr. Gaurav Mathur, who is the Chief Operating Officer. Um, you know, he is he was former uh, senior partner at IBM. From the investors' portfolio, we have uh, Google Ventures, as I talked about. Then we have Nexus Ventures, Iconic, uh, GTV Capital, Telstra Ventures, InQtel, and recently we also got procured. Um, uh, fresh series of funding from Atlassian, which is, um, you know, we, we procured a, a couple of weeks back. So overall company size is approximately, you know, um, um, 230, and we have been helping all the different companies around the world to uh, make it happen. Yeah, we can move on to the next slide, Rohan. Thank you. So in, the, in this context, I'll be speaking about uh, how we have been helping uh, different companies, you know, monitor their performances on consumer apps in their different regions, and what makes Hedgepin so special in doing that. Thanks, Ron. So Hedgepin helps these companies uh, evaluate their digital experiences uh, with a very robust platform. Um, so we let customers remotely access a lot of devices. 
um, in more than 100 locations in 70 countries uh, with different type of deployment models. So if your customer experience is focused on uh, interacting with devices, we have a variety of devices, starting with web browsers, mobile devices like Android, iOS, um, gaming devices, smart home devices like Alexas and Google Homes. For media use cases, we have devices like Roku TV, Apple TV, uh, uh, Samsung TV, LG, and whatnot. We also support uh, remote access to uh, set-up boxes and any and every touch point that your customer can you know, uh, interact with. Headspin provides remote access to these number of devices in the real geo locations. With real internet, these are all bare metal devices in real geo locations that we operate in. Uh, and we have different type of deployment models. So how do we do that? You know, So we have a special uh, appliance called Headspin Appliance. These are appliances called Headspin T-Box and Navy Box, uh, which are deployed in different parts of the world. And uh, once you get access to any of these devices, you can access these devices using a web-based URL, web-based portal. And uh, it is as easy as interacting with a phone or a, or a web browser or any device in your hand. So, uh, so that I've talked about device coverage, I've talked about location. We can do different types of deployment models. So starting with you know, on-prem deployment where we can uh, deploy these devices in, in the customer's location or in, in the, uh, area of choice that you want to deploy it in. We can also deploy it on Headspin data centers where we operate in, and we can also, uh, we have a, a very interesting offering called BYOD where uh, the customer can have their own devices and remotely access through different locations. Uh, this is just the one piece of the solution. What makes us very special and stand out is uh, anything that you do on Headspin devices is um, in a user journey, we call it a session. And every session gets tied to a very strong data science platform where we capture more than 130 data KPIs of different layers. So these layer, these, these uh, data KPIs could be application, uh, device, network, operating system, as well as evaluate your experience on edge. Uh, so the data model in, in, uh, in a nutshell gives you comprehensive uh, report, which talks about your overall experience uh, uh, impacting the phone, impacting the network, impacting uh, the application, the code level as well. And it talks about you know, the packet level detail or the functional uh, stack calls as well, where you can evaluate if you clicked on a button and if it goes to the next page, you can you will have 10 different functions called and it will tell you, the AI engine will tell each function stack level calls as well and what was the impact of each score. All of this data is tied to a screen recording as well. So anything that you perform on a Headspin device gets recorded and you can go back in a time series graph and check what exactly happened on which session on which date. So this makes it very special from SRE perspective. Uh, and lastly, we also have a dashboarding because all this data is, is plethora of data that you can generate using Headspin, uh, which will give you AI analysis, AI will give you issue detections. You can do root cause analysis of uh, why an issue has been happening. You can do regression intelligence. You can compare the same build or the earlier build and how the performance has improved or degraded. The dashboard gives you actionable insights and the alert and critical KPIs, which makes it a very collaborative platform where your product engineering, test and ops team can collaborate and work together. Interestingly, uh, Headspin, as a platform can integrate with your manual testing, with your automation testing, with uh, using frameworks like APM, Selenium, uh, uh, any uh, uh, low code, no code kind of uh, test automation tool like Tosca, Leapwork, you can integrate with it. You can integrate with your CI CD pipeline using APIs. You can integrate with your ticketing tool like Jira. And uh, you can also integrate with uh, job schedulers like Jenkins and whatnot. Interestingly, Headspin can also be integrated with your service uh, repository, uh, service version managers, or your code repository like GitHub, GitLab. So anything that you do in a, in a DevOps environment where you're, um, you know, in an agile environment, you're continuously developing and continuously deploying, you can have each release uh, getting regression testing done very easily on the real devices. From, uh, this is from the tester's perspective. And your developers can you know, evaluate their experience. Uh, they, they can do a, their unit testing, integration testing on Headspin devices. Uh, from 
compliance's perspective we help a lot of companies uh, major telco companies and major uh, uh, digital natives evaluate their compliances as well and it's a tool which can be used by product managers to you know compare the last release to the new release and uh, the cios as well where they can uh, from single point we have some something called headspin uh, uh, impact score where it's a single matrix of 0 to 100 and you can um, see how your experience is from you know last day and how it is evaluating you know evolving i think we can go to the next slide Ron. yeah okay so i will uh, hand it over to you yeah thank you thank you kishan thank you for the overview so um let me deep dive a bit into what we do for the telecom industry so um just a bit of background uh, myself i manage most of headspin's telco customers and we have a large deployment in asia pacific um, what we do is we have five key processes and tests that we run for our telco clients and basically we've built upon our platform as a digital native solution to further drive that and test actual real life environments for telcos so the first is with device compatibility we have zero day support on new devices and with that, we can allow our telcos to test brand new production devices and make sure that their network is working perfectly with their customers' devices. We do field and drive testing to check that the real world apps, like say, for example, Facebook, TikTok, Google, whatever's important to your end customers is running perfectly in a field scenario. We evaluate the network quality of experience from an end user perspective. So the key here is that by testing, we can automate any app on any real production device. So we can automate things like video streaming, gaming, voice, uh, P2P calls, WhatsApp, Skype. And then we can benchmark that against other uh, telco competitors and tell you how you can improve the performance of these apps on your network versus your competitor. We have a quality assurance process optimization to make sure that by automating the top apps, the customers can have a great experience and optimize the performance to make sure that in different locations around the country or around the world, the experience is good. And finally, we can uh, ensure that the telco specific apps that are written, for example, the SIM card procurement, the eSIM uh, buying services on the app, they work perfectly. So we not only work on the app testing, but also on um, the overall consumer experience. Here are some use cases that we are helping with. Um, we make sure that the real user experience is, is able to be tested in a black box manner. So we can show a telco how is the, how are the top 10 apps working on their phones, on real networks and real SIM cards. Um, we have the infrastructure to test those popular applications and test OTT apps. Then when we do find a problem or a, or a degradation compared to the competitor, we can debug the root cause on a side-by-side -side comparison, which I'll show you, and use that to help the network teams identify potential mitigation. And then the last thing is because Headspin is a global network of over 100 locations, we can monitor the performance of roaming and general geographical changes to make sure that the app is performing, oh, sorry, the network is performing as best as it can be, no matter where the customer is. Uh, we have a really good success story with an Australian telco provider. There was a multiple deployment in many cities around the country, and they were able to test some of the key apps in, in the country, such as YouTube, Netflix, in a black box environment, make sure that the overall performance is really good and make if there was any issues, the they would get alerted before too many customers were impacted and use that to further remediate the issue before the tel before the customer had a bad experience. This allows this allowed the telco to gain a competitive edge and continuously monitor the solution and their network. Now, let me show you a demonstration of what we do. Um, so what you see here is the Headspin platform. We have four key features. The first is the remote control, where you can remotely test a range of devices and smart uh, smart devices around the, uh, different locations in the world or the country. And you can automate these devices 
to run any app from the Play Store or, or App or App Store continuously as every you know many times a day. Then what we do from there is not only running the functional tests, we actually can actually record, we have a proprietary way to record the video and network data. And we run that through our AI engine in the cloud, which analyzes it and automatically alerts when there's issues. For example, it can pick up uh, loading pages and spinning wheels and I and alert that to the, the the person who's managing the network before the customer is really seeing the problem. Then once we collect this trove of data, we, we put it into our data lake and we use performance monitoring to proactively identify any issues and use them again to figure out uh, is there a time, say, where there's congestion in the network? Is there a degradation at certain times, say, for example, 9 p.m.? And you can be alerted to that as well. And finally, uh, using this big data lake, we can actually build custom dashboards based on the, the needs of the network monitor to identify when there's things like how many spinning wheels do they get, how long did it take for an app to load, and use that as a, as a health check that the, the team can log in every day, look at the dashboard and identify if there's any degradation from a single pane of glass. So I'll show you what it looks like in the remote control. If we open up a device, you'll see here, we have a range of locations. We can do TVs, um, set-top boxes, Android, iOS, zero-day support, like I mentioned, and real metal browsers. And we have global roaming as well. This is a very small subset of the devices and locations we have on offer. When I open a device, uh, as you can see, it's got a real SIM card, a real carrier. It's a real device straight from a consumer app store, uh, a consumer device store. So there's no jailbreaking or routing needed. Um, you can open the Play Store if required and download any production app. Now we have a flex, we're very well integrated with a flexible automation tool called Appium, which you can use to drive these devices and test any production app. Now, as you can see, we capture a whole bunch of data like logs and screenshots, but the real magic is during the automation, we actually can record all the video and network data, like I mentioned. So once that recording is done, this is the example of a report you get. So what you can see here is we ran a test against TikTok and just looked at some videos and recorded what was happening. This is the production app as well. So if you see here, we've got a the video recording a layer seven traffic, which we can snoop transparently, even on a SIM card, uh, layer four traffic and a range of device metrics and video metrics. So if you see here, we have, this is where our AI has identified some issues when there's a spike like here. Uh, we have a range of video quality metrics. So the first being video quality MOS, which tells you what a real experience mean opinion score would be based on our AI model. And we have some more static uh, KPIs like blurriness, blockiness, contrast, brightness, colorfulness, downsampling index, and page content and frame rate. And then we have all the network traffic summarized, how much traffic was consumed, CPU, memory, IO, battery, and um, a range of other metrics. Now, Another amazing thing is we can actually X-ray into many production apps and tell you what underlying Java calls were running at the time, like you can see here. And finally, we have the API calls, which is really useful for telco. So you can see um, what was the IP address that the traffic was going to? Is that expected based on the CDNs? Uh, what was the API calls that were running at each moment? Where was the video being served from? So all this can be fun found on real production apps using just our black box proprietary methodology. Now on the left, as Kishan mentioned, we have an impact score, which tells you how is the app experience on a scale of zero to hundred. And you can see some suggestions as to what was the cause of the problem. So we can identify when there's low page content, which generally indicates loading, um, when there's slow downloads and how often that occurred. And then this can be compared side by side to a competitive network as well. So once all this data is collected, we actually have a monitoring uh, feature which identifies the problem, uh, any sort of degradation and can help you compare why that happened. So a great example here is Netflix on 
a SIM card, a Telstra SIM versus an Optus SIM in Australia. So as you go through the session, you'll notice that the Optus SIM takes a bit longer to log in. And this can mean the difference between a happy and a sad customer. So looking at that, um, we actually have the side-by-side -side comparison here. And what you'll notice is obviously there's different video CDNs, which is based on the telco, like Optus versus Telstra. But the most interesting thing here is that we have the, uh, we can see here based, if we deep dive into the waterfall, the previous uh, session, that this this slow, this slow API call is where the login is happening. And you can see that it's slower on, on session B. So you can actually look into there and look at the TCP connection and you'll see that the, the IP address is actually resolved to a, uh, a server in the USA, but we're having traffic from Melbourne, Australia. So what's really interesting is that Netflix still relies on a USA server to perform the login. And what this meant for the telco is that they need to optimize the routing to that USA server if they want their customers to have the best login experience. So this is a great example of how we can find a problem identify it, bring it to the front, and then find a, a potential solution. Lastly, we have our custom dashboard. So if you see here, we have um, just that these are the seven or eight apps that wanted to be tested by the customer. And you can see how, how many passed or failed, how many tests were passed or failing, um, the, the total impact time on average, and the location. And then what we do is, um, based on custom requirements, we can actually make a, a dashboard for each app. So you can see here, we have um, things like, what was the top SNI server? This is based on analyzing the PCAP. Um, how, what was the average download, upload, um, et cetera? And where was the data going to? And how long did it take for the video to start loading? Then we have very important matrices like app launch time, loading animation, which is a spinning wheel impact time. How long did it take for the video to start loading? And um, max download, average download speed, and just the overall impact time of the experience based on our AI model. So just with a single pane of glass, uh, the network teams can get very high level and granular details as to how the app was performing and really how is the end user experiencing their product and their network? And also, is there any regional variability So that's it from the demonstration. Uh, any questions? I'll have a look here. Sure, Ron, there's, there's oh, an yeah. interesting question which asks, uh, what kind of data can be captured from customer phones? Um, oh, happy true. to take this question. Yeah. So, um, so from the first perspective, we do not capture any data from the customer's phone. We create synthetic uh, 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 a user environment where we recreate a real user scenario and we test out the application on dummy users uh, where we do not capture any person's uh, personal details. We recreate the real user environment using headspin devices and uh, we capture all the data from you know the network KPIs from the operating system, the application layer, the function stack level call in even you know, we can give you uh, all the details why the performance of an application might not be so good. Yeah, and just to add, um, for, depending on how technical you are, we so we capture layer four to layer seven traffic from any any consumer device, iOS or Android. Absolutely, um, and from the, from the device coverage, we do provide all the Android and iOS device over the shelf. Uh, different kind of TVs, uh, set up boxes, gaming consoles like PS, Xbox. Um, we also provide uh, you know a set up boxes, smart home devices like Alexa, Google Homes, and whatnot. In fact, we have extended our solution to automotives as well, where we can test out remotely on uh, the real head unit of infotainment systems and uh, test on different type of devices. The yeah, second great. question which has come to us is which locations are possible with Headspin? So yes, uh, we, are, we are operating in more than 100 locations around 70 countries. So uh, if you have a specific location of choice and if it's not there in our coverage, we can deploy uh, using an on-prem deployment model where we can you know, place a remote lab for yourself in your own location of choice, and we can do that. Yeah. Um, uh, some third some question customers, is, yeah, I can go through this, yeah. Kishan. Some customers yeah, right, that have used right. is um, Optus, AT&T, Verizon, 
big globe Rakutan, and there's a few more. So we can talk about that offline. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's another question with Kiji uh, by by Kiji. Uh, can your product HPIN be used during application development? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, why I'll tell you the reason. Uh, imagine you are building a product and you get to know how the experience of that product is going to be uh, before even you go to the market so that you don't, you're don't you safe from all the good and the bad reviews and you can monitor how your experience is going to be when you go to the production, right? So from, a, from an application which is under development, you can uh, deploy your applications which are uh, native applications and uh, test out on them. In fact, this helps you take better decisions uh, for your deployments. Whether your build is ready for the next release or not, you can take a very intelligent call uh, that if your if your uh, environment from the production environment is stable enough or not. In fact, uh, large largely a lot of uh, digital natives. Uh, um, I cannot take a lot of names, but a lot of companies use Hatspin to evaluate their experience before even they go to the market. So it's an application which is used by developers as well as you know the testers community. Yeah. Um, for the next one, where can Headspin capture these metrics from Android and iOS consistently? So from a technical perspective, we can do it on any Android or iOS device. We have a proprietary um, technology. It's a, basically an internal VPN that still sends traffic through the SIM card, but just captures everything. So there's no problem with capturing from any device. I think we are getting good, good enough uh, questions today. And in fact, where can Hedgepin be installed? So Hedgepin is very easy to use. It's a web-based UI where um, you can use it on any browser. If you are using a laptop, you can just go to a laptop browser, Chrome browser, or Mozilla Firefox, and you can go to a link. Uh, in fact, I covered this in the beginning. So any of the Hedgepin devices can be you know, um, accessed uh, using a Hedgepin web-based UI. and uh, to use that, how do we facilitate that is all of these devices which we talked about are connected to one of the HPN appliances in a very secure fashion, in a very secure model, where uh, you only get access to the device and there's there's no uh, jailbreaking happening. There's no other uh, um, person who can use the device at the point you're using it. And we make it available using a web-based UI, which is on a, on a website easily. Yeah, and just to add to that, Kishan, we so we can we have a basically a standalone um called we call it a P box, which allows twenty four devices to be put into a a cooled locked uh, rack mountable box, and that can be installed in any office or data center or network exchange that you want. So basically, we can put it anywhere you like. Uh, can we verify audio inputs and install output from uh, intended output from from a series of devices connected to your own device phone? Yes. Uh, yes. Roman, um, would you want to take this question? Yeah, yeah. So one thing I didn't show you is that we actually have a audio streaming service for these devices, which is quite unique to our product. So in, in definitely, we can inject audio. What we do is we have um, Bluetooth cards that basically pair to these devices and we have APIs and other calls to inject audio and then take the record the output. And then we even have a MOS scale where you can uh, compare that match between those two inputs and outputs. So you can see how much did a, a phone call degrade the quality of this the voice compared to a WhatsApp call, for example. So the answer is yes. Absolutely. Um, happy to take more questions uh, if you would want to, you know, um, have any any concerns. If you want to use it for your own uh, team, if you want to, you know, recommend it, you can ask questions. Hi, my name is uh, Eric Po from Nigeria. Does this support regression testing? Absolutely, yes, it does uh, support regression testing as well. 
So if you have, uh, you know, a, a application in a fashion where it is uh, coming up with new releases every time, so the amount of testing that you do on regression is too much. So yes, it can do regression testing and you can compare your next release with your uh, earlier release and you can compare the difference in the performance session, which Rohan showed us in a, in a session where there, it was comparing two different devices. As well as in regression testing, you can automate your test cases uh, using, any, using any framework like ABM, Selenium, or uh, different type of frameworks which are out there in the market. And uh, yes, you can run it in a CI-CD fashion as well, where uh, continuously uh, monitor the regression uh, side of it. This is actually very interesting, uh, uh, Rohan, because I was talking to one of the customers recently, and they currently do not have any man, uh, automation testing. And they are yeah. every time before a new release, they are uh, they have to test out thousand test cases on different platforms, and uh, that delays their next release, and hence they are releasing every you know every quarter once. I mean, in a CI/CD fashion, you can make two releases every month, uh, you know. So I recommend to them a solution where they can uh, automate their testing and do the regression testing uh, on Headspin devices. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we, we at Headspin, we use our own tools to release multiple times a day. And it, it's, it's just so much better to get to customers quicker. Absolutely. In fact, in many of the cases, we have seen that, um, you know, there are different types of testings which are done including the regression, there's smoke test, unit test, uh, you know, they would want to do cross browser testing, cross device testing, you know, comparing from a, a load perspective, if they are comparing, you know, in, a, in the part of the world, uh, how exactly my application is performing in different regions, they can do all of this using Headspin devices and any automation platform that they want to use. Yeah. There's another question which came from Eric Poe, which is, thanks for your response. I'm interested in automation testing and subsequent regression testing. Please advise me further way to absolutely, absolutely, uh, Eric. Uh, uh, we have our email IDs, you know, in the in the um, session where uh, you can connect with us on on using going to our website. You can go through headspin.io website and um, send us a query, um, and and then we'll for uh, you know come back to you. Or else you can write to Rohan or me separately, or uh, we'll be happy to help you. There's a question which came from Seema. Hey Seema, I uh, just saw your LinkedIn and your friends with Deravi as well. So uh, who can access devices from Pbox? How security do these devices working? Absolutely. Okay. So Headspin is, uh, you know, is, is working with a lot of large banking customers, is working with all the large digital enterprises, where security is, you know, much of a concern these days. So uh, any person who has given access to the uh, uh, web-based UI uh, gets created at org. In an org, you can add the team members who have the similar domain name. Let's imagine I work for Headspin, so I have an email ID, which is Kishan uh, Tiwari at headspin.io. So anybody who is from headspin.io domain name can access, uh, and you can give access to people whom you want. From a security point of view, you can define your own orgs and teams so that only the people you choose to give access have access. Second is, this device is dedicatedly given to you for one year. So, uh, and if you can imagine if a banking customer is using us, then uh, definitely it is very, very secure. We comply with all the security policies and one single device and the text execution data can also, you know, uh, stay within your own premises and networks uh, from our deployment model. So from a network security perspective, we definitely, uh, you know, bring the A game. Yeah, it's just to know with our, um, security. Yeah, with, with our P boxes, we have um, a lock code on the front. So you can lock the entire range of devices in the data center or wherever the device is set up. And the other thing is um, in terms of uh, if there's a secure problem, uh, sorry, a security hurdle, we also have a completely isolated deployment where everything is inside the network. So there's no internet access to our services. And then a lot of customers use that so that they can be 100% sure that there's 100% no, there's security on their potentially confidential tests. 
absolutely i mean i'm so excited that you know so many of interesting questions are coming up and uh, this talks about this uh, really is a problem with uh, these companies who really want to you know uh, make their digital experiences better on the network side as well as the application side and that that will gain them a lot of trust with their customers and consumers and will increase the business possibilities um, do we have any questions any more questions uh, happy to answer them Thank you, Anonymous. I'll keep in touch. That was an exciting session. Yeah, 100% we're, we're there for you, so we'd love to connect. We'll just give it two more minutes, Rohan, and then uh, in the next two minutes, we'll conclude the call if we do not have many questions. Yeah. I think then we are good. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. It was a pleasure speaking with all of you and showcasing our capabilities in application testing as well as telcos. Uh, looking forward to speaking with you on different uh, areas where we can be of your help. Uh, you can connect with us uh, by you know, going to our LinkedIn, uh, speaking to anybody from Headspin using our, you know, um, you can go to Headspin web, uh, website, type your query and our people will reach out to you. Or else you can write to me or Rohan on, a, on an email and then we'll be happy to help you out. Um, thank you so much for joining this call. Really excited to speaking with all of you and um, have a very nice, um, great day and a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye.